So, now, the talk that we will hear now is about Hello Kitty. And it's uh, titled Open Source DVB Digital Video Broadcasting S2 and SX for GNU Radio. And it's held by Michelle Thompson. She's uh, co-founded uh, the Open Research Institute. And what describes her best is she's an engineer. So the Open Source Research Institute is devoted entirely to open source work, and mostly in the areas of amateur radio and digital communication. One of these projects is uh, called Phase 4 Ground, which is an open source implementation of the DVB S2. Um, yeah, so Michelle, she is uh, very into instruments, but not only science instruments, but also those that make music. So I was just told that she is playing the uh, second violin in a professional orchestra. Well, but on top of that, she is also, <laughs> yeah. We would like to hear that, of course. <laughs> yeah. In the demo session, maybe you could. Uh, <laughs> and she's also building artificial intelligence pipe organs. Is that true? OK. But the talk is about. If you ever wondered, well, you have this antenna in your, in your backyard, don't you? So how can you use it to communicate with the ISS? Michelle will tell you how. Please, Michelle. It's a great honor to be here. Thank you so much for letting me come and talk. This is a technical update on our efforts to get DVB S2 and DVB S2X into the open source community, specifically on GNU Radio. Now, why do this? Because we have open source software, and we have open source hardware, and we are more or less successfully grappling with those things. The other leg of the stool is protocols. How do you communicate? between the software and the hardware, and how do you communicate with the things that you've built with your software and hardware? Sometimes this is overlooked, especially in space communications. Open protocols help you a lot, and we believe very strongly that you deserve modern, effective, cutting-edge protocols in the open source community. I'm a ground person. I have worked on satellite projects before, but my real passion and devotion is ground equipment that talks with space. That's where DBB S2X comes in and is used. I'd also like to issue a, a very serious offer. Um, I've heard over the past day or so uh, a lot of trouble with GNU Radio. I've been an organizer for the GNU Radio Conference for two years, and next year I'm a co-chair. I use GNU Radio, I'm not a core developer, um, but I spend a lot of time trying to improve the content. The other co-founder, we have three founders of Open Research Institute, is Ben Hilburn. He's the president of GNU Radio Foundation. So I have a lot of connections to GNU Radio, core development team, and the people that run the conference. I would like for you to use me to get help in getting input and things fixed in GNU Radio. There is a lot that needs to be fixed. It's a difficult, complex piece of software. I love it, with an asterisk. It's sort of like someone handing you the, the keys to um, a Ferrari and saying, you know, go pick up some milk at the grocery store. And you hop in and there's no steering wheel. That can be the experience with GNU Radio, so please, um, Communicate with me, because I'm here to help you, this community especially, better use GNU Radio. All right, a little bit about me. I'm a ham, and that's why I became an engineer. I got some book learning. I'm active in IEEE, and my background is in information theory. I have a master's in it. It's a icky map. Um, that's kind of why I got into protocols and, and digital processing. I'm the leader of Phase 4 Ground. And DBBS2 and DBBS2X is our chosen protocol for the downlink in our system. 
All of our reference design is in GNU Radio. So getting DBBS2 and S2X receivers, really good ones, into GNU Radio is mission critical for us. The hardest part out of DBBS2 and S2X, the thing that has stopped most other open source teams is the forward error correction decode. It's a low density parity check. And it is a complex decode, especially if you want to use soft decisions, um, which gives you better performance. So this is active areas of research and development for us. You know about ORI, and Phase 4 Ground is one of our projects. We also have kicked off a space effort to do an open source, support open source space. Uh, we also have a, an effort called Open Cars and Open Codex. This is the system that we need DBB S2 and S2X for. The payload up here is communicated to by stations on the ground. The uplinks are in 5 gigahertz handband. The downlink is in 10 gigahertz handband. Now, the neat thing is that you can use this for space and terrestrial with very, very little difference because in 10 gigahertz, the terrestrial experimentation and space subsegments are right next to each other. Here is an update on what we've accomplished so far. At the upper levels, we have um, application level. We have a RTP IP multicast SDR package uh, written by Phil Karn. This is real-time protocol and IP multicast for software-defined radio. We have a lot of work on DBB correlator and new work by someone who's here, uh, Manala Surlagas, who contributed a really nice uh, bit of code uh, this past week at the GNU radio conference. We've been invited to, by the development team, to look at fixing the GNU radio correlator estimator block. Uh, it has some issues with the dynamic threshold version, and we contributed um, a, a static threshold version so that now when you use that block, you can choose between the old method and the new one, which has some bugs. Our open source LDP decode effort is going really well. Um, we do have an implementation of DBB S2X receive, but it is written for a GPU, for a graphical processing unit for the NVIDIA. This was done by one of our team members in the UK named Charles Brain. What we want to do is to keep working on that version and move it forward into GNU Radio. One of the exciting things over the past week at the GNU Radio conference was heterogeneous computing workshop. A lot of attention has been paid lately to getting GPU and FPGA acceleration in GNU Radio. So this code base will stay and will continue to be developed. But we also need this decode in, well, GNU Radio and in an FPGA. So we need to port it to Verilog. And we would really, really like to have a reference design in MATLAB. One of the reasons for having several different implementations is that GPU uh, solutions have some advantages and they have some disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is that all of the frames have to be the same format all across the GPU decode uh, stage. This means that using adaptive coding and modulation where you can change your coding and modulation in DBBS2 standard for, per frame, you lose a lot of efficiency if you uh, have selected a GPU implementation. We have work on a dual band feed. Mention the frequencies of five gig and 10 gig. You may notice something if you're familiar with RF and that one is a multiple of the other. So having one antenna for a system is, is really quite desirable. Yes, you can have separate transmit and receive antennas, but having a single antenna to worry about pointing once is our goal. So we worked hard on a dual band feed that gives you the enough separation but, and reduces the interference between the uplink and the downlink. And we achieved it, and it's been verified in a professional lab. Now, DVB S2, uh, digital video broadcast, satellite downlink, second version, uh, and the X is an extension. This is broadcast, like television, and like, well, how useful can it be for general ham use? pretty darn useful, but it gets even more useful when you take out the transport stream, take out the MPEG layer, and use another DVB protocol called generic stream encapsulation. So we are doing that. It gives you, a, it reduces the overhead from the transport stream, um, and it, it also 
allows you to, um, to pass generic data, any data. This is really cool, uh, neat work. So what we did is we made sure that Wireshark has a dissector for GSE. It's in there from a team member. And there's a, a module, uh, a block in, in GNU Radio uh, that's DVB GSE that'll handle GSE. So Wireshark and GNU Radio are becoming ready uh, to use this part of our system. We have filter work at 10 gig and five gigahertz amplifier work. There's ARAP, which is amateur radio access point demonstrations. As you know, you can't just go buy a five gigahertz amateur rig just anywhere. This is a digital system. Uh, what we would like to do is to support legacy traffic, uh, P25 or uh, FM, wideband traffic, and it's uh, aggregated, and then the uplink is provided by uh, an access point. We've demonstrated this over the past 18 months at various uh, events. It works pretty good. We only support four channels right now, uh, but we're working on expanding that. We're having a lot of fun. Doing a project in the open source community is difficult. Um, it needs to be meaningful, it needs to be fun, and this definitely is. And we're also buying pretty much every SDR dev board we can find, and I know that there's a lot of interest in doing uh, benchmarking and evaluations from Libraspace, so we would like to offer to help with that. Uh, our, out, out of all of our team, there's about 230 people on our various lists, and about 20 or 30 of them are active developing at any one time. We can help evaluate um, SDRs and like tell you, uh, give you a little bit more traction on which ones are suitable for a ground station, which ones might have problems, which ones need maybe a little more software work. We are willing to help with that. The ARAP looks like this. So you have an access point and traditional traffic. These radios are digital radios that are phase four ground radios. This is kind of taking a page from a, um, another ham radio system called System Fusion, which has automatic mode selection. It can tell whether or not it's getting a System Fusion or a traditional FM handheld traffic. Where have we been? Well, we just were recently at Tapper, so I gave a presentation, a long presentation on um, LDPC decode to kind of explain it in, um, you know, to where you can understand it. Uh, so that's online. We were at Dayton Hamvention, and we, that's where we met up with SatDogs and Libraspace for the first time in person. And we really do owe them a huge, huge debt of gratitude and thanks. If it wasn't for the encouragement and the kindness from Libraspace and SatDogs people, then we would not be here today, and we would not be as successful as we are today. They were key in, over the past year in continuing and expanding this project. And then we were at the Goddard uh, Interplanetary CubeSat workshop, and we learned a ton about what NASA and um, industry people are, are doing, and it was extremely informative. We hosted the DVB S2X block party at GNU Radio Conference this past week, and got a lot done, and the documentation is still coming in, met a ton of people, uh, and we're just gonna keep on working. Our next event is called Microwave Update. This is an amateur radio microwave uh, engineering community event annual meeting. We'll have a lab there, and maybe get a little bit more done. This is where you can find us. We have all the usual things, the slacks and the mailing list and, um, and GitHub. Everything is published as we do it, which makes it a little bit messy. We believe in open process along with open source. Um, and you can find me on pretty much any social media as abraxas 3 d All right, questions? Have question. Oh, here. First one is me. <laughs> Sorry, we had a spy. Hi, Michelle, this is Martin. Hello. Uh, I, had a, I understood that it was sent on the CubeSat, so uh, it was on the Love Earth orbit. Have you a lot of problem with the Doppler effect on this frequency and this modulation, etc.? No, we have not yet had a lot of trouble with Doppler. We are, the types of payload that we are uh, shooting for here would be HEO and above. So the 4B and 4A payloads uh, in the amateur radio community are GEO. Um, that's where this works the best. 
for Leo in order to have a, a viable you know, digital uh, type of system. We think that you really need more than just one CubeSat. In the amateur community, you generally get one CubeSat launch at a time and nobody's done a formation or a constellation yet. So for a system like this, a broadband digital system, we think HEO and above is appropriate and that's what we're targeting. The, some of the Doppler um, experiments that have been done with DVBS2 are actually, the results are pretty good. Someone else? Another question over there? In what space? Really? Oh my goodness. Nice shot. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I'm very excited for moving on on a more sophisticated protocol like the DBS2. Uh, but uh, do you believe that uh, the amateur com community is ready for this? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yes, really? the community is ready for this. Definitely. That's good, that's good news. <laughs> I'm not convinced about it, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not worried. I am, uh, as you might guess, a raging optimist. Um, but yes, I think that the community is ready for this. This is, what we're providing is a pipe, a really solid digital broadband pipe. And if you want, then you can use it for whatever communication you desire. And that means a lot of work at application layer. That means figuring out, you know, ways to talk that are not locked down or predetermined for you in the amateur community with, you know, voice, codecs that are not that great, things like that. Um, but I have absolutely no doubt that the community is ready for this. Well, perhaps you're so much for it, you should go online. Yeah. Okay, and uh, another question. Uh, do we know if there is a, a hardware chip on a, in a low cost, uh, let's say, range that can actually uh, be placed on a satellite? I heard part of that. It, do I know if there's hardware yeah, that can... Yeah, uh, is there any, any hardware in, a low, in, a, in the low cost range uh, that uh, actually implements the DVB-S2 uh, and uh, the RF uh, part of it? So we can place it on a CubeSat, let's say? On a um, I would say yes. You know, is it, uh, what's your definition of low cost? You know, is, is probably what I should ask before I say yes. The, the trick with any sort of multiple access system like this, where you have frequency division, multiple access up and TDM down, is that you're, you're gonna wanna use a polyphase filter bank on the satellite, or ground sat, or, you know, if it's terrestrial. And then you start getting into, you know, how, how expensive is it? Well, what kind of bandwidth do you wanna support? Our goal is 10 megahertz, so uh. that's what we would like to support. The neat thing about DVBS2 is that what you do when you design it is you pick the symbol rate, and that stays fixed. And the the, the mod pods, the modulation encoding, changes with respect to the channel conditions, uh, and then the, that means the bit rate changes. So these things seesaw around your your symbol rate. Once you pick a constant symbol rate for your system, then that reduces the expense by a lot of the RF components. You know the filters become. Um, you know, one set of filters, you don't have to do adaptive. Uh, but anytime you get into digital and a polyphase filter bank type of thing, it is gonna be relatively expensive. There are solutions and the payload people found one, the 4B payload people have uh, implementation that was uh, designed and built at Virginia Tech. Um, if I was gonna do it on the ground, uh, since I'm uh, kind of in favor of ground, then I would probably get uh, a pretty powerful SDR you know, beg, borrow, steal one, and then I uh, put that on a pole. Does that sort of answer your question? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so the polyphase filter bank implementations in uh, GNU Radio need work. There was uh, RF NOC implementation released last year, talked about last year at the conference, and then another big update that was more of a critique this year. So that's another active area on our team is learning about polyphase filter banks and how awesome they are and learning through MATLAB simulations how they work and then coming up with uh, inexpensive, reliable uh, implementations and hardware. So if you want to learn more about that, you know, come talk to me. Thank you. That, that would be a good thing to do. Can you go back to your first slide? Sure. The very first one. Very first and, one. Yeah. And can you stand in the middle of the stage? <laughs> 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 
I mean, you're, you're here, you said, you said it, you, you had energy from Libo Space, you had energy from everybody. Yes. Uh, and uh, I think you should take a picture of her and... So, thank you very much, Michelle. And I think we'll, uh, any, anyone who wants to talk to Michelle, she's here, so please... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a view, view. <laughs> Happy picture. Because Hello, okay, Kitty, Dominic, Hello but, uh, Kitty brings peace and love. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. Now, uh, give uh, loads of applause to Michelle. Thank you very much. So, when I prepare the next uh, speaker, I will uh, leave the mic to Mantos. And uh, while well, he's uh, taking off the spider we had on the desk. 